Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 8 and Third Reich events. Let's continue playing here. Yes, our land power effect kick in. Good money for fuel? No, we don't want fuel. No fuel. No fuel, no fuel, no fuel, no fuel, no fuel, no fuel. Fortunately, now we're building up our steel reserves. Are you also on the fuel kick? No, no fuel. Want to buy something? We'll sell you supplies. You want to sell me some resources? I'll very much consider it, but... I moved a little more um, leadership over here to officers because this was getting a little too low and we're not really in the expansion phase. Okay. Mountain Unit Command and Control has advanced. That is most excellent. So now we have that fairly well done. We're going to try to keep out of the red there. Okay, tactical ground crew training has advanced. So they can turn around the aircraft better. do that. Dapping research since we have none. And we have some bonuses from various events as well there. Which help a bit. Rare materials. Hmm. No, thank you. We'll see about conquering Greece instead. Okay. The Deutsche Party. Party. I'm uh, learning how to better pronounce these German words. Um, the um, Carpathian Deutsche Party has changed its name to the Deutsche Party because it is no longer... Um, part of Czechoslovakia, because that was, um, um, Carpathian was to separate itself out from the Sudeten Deutsche Party, so they, um, this is Franz, uh, Kazmarin, it's spelled several different ways, his name, um, in various times, his last name is spelled different ways, so there's no, my understanding, definite way, um, Spell him. His name if you want to look him up. Um, he favored the Hitler mustache style. There he is, putting some medals. Uh, some of his um, personnel. And around this time, they changed the symbols from the sort of KDP type symbol to the swastika, just going straight up. With the sort of shield, as you see, the, for their armbands, they used to symbol. That's an enamel badge. I know I'm giving too much detail, but. So, we're going to, because we've started down, I give you choices early on, um, we're going to support the, um, the DP now. Now, okay, this does deserve a bit more talking about. Um, oh, and so yes, yeah, so there is a, a Nazi movement within Slovakia that is based primarily on German-speaking people. Um, Reich Protector Neruth, Nerath. Um, Constantine. Um, he, in this game, is still um, foreign minister. 
German, um, Hitler had a divide and conquer sort of, and though that's the wrong term, but um, divide and conquer style of leadership within Germany, in that there would often be um, competing people with similar portfolios or agencies with similar portfolios, and it would sort of be up to the performance of the agency or the leader. And eventually, the idea is is to find out who is doing better at it, and then um, they become the winner, and you shift uh, more and more of the power. And um, like if it's a competing production facilities or something, eventually shift uh, the facilities under the the single more successful um, agency or organization. So that's sort of the unlike. You know, and you know, at least at this point, no, none of these even middle-level managers are, are faced with death like you are in the Soviet system. And I know I keep knocking the Soviet system, but I think it's worthy to do so. Is if production levels didn't meet their standards, somebody was a um, a traitor, and um, and um, sabotaging the situation. So somebody had to die, and they literally did. They, you know. And it didn't matter if they didn't send enough um, metal for the widgets that they were making. And so you could only, you know, only make so many. If if it got known that you weren't meeting your totals, and they they found scapegoats, and okay, maybe not everybody got shot, but they were sent off to um, gulags somewhere, you know, and a lot of this kind of stuff, whether permanently or or for a few years. Here, you just got fired, demoted, you know, retired early. Or, I Constantine, he gets um, moved off into um, being the primary administrator for uh, Bohemian Moravia. And this is, get back to the dual thing. It started out that on Ribbentrop, where is he? He's here somewhere. Jakob von Ribbentrop here, was the um, foreign minister for the NSDAP, while um, Constantine was the foreign minister for the government, you know, in the, with the foreign minister's job. And they were both running parallel uh, diplomatic services overseas. Jakob von Ribbentrop was a close associate of Hitler. He, that's how he gained power. He, he was, in my opinion, far from incompetent, but he was a, um, not necessarily a good diplomat in that he wasn't good at going overseas and making friends of other diplomats and kind of doing the thing that, hey, we're all good guys together, just my government's a little off and we'll try to smooth it out over the, <coughs> over the rough edges. Now, he was going overseas and being a Nazi, you know doing Heil Hitler salutes to the Queen of England when he presents his credentials there or whatever. And just, you know, not being offensive in this really bad way, but not being smooth in a diplomatic way, if you will. But he gains his power by whenever, you know, because he hung out a lot with Hitler basically for the, the walks up to the um, tea house at the Berchtesgarten Garden and dinner at night. Hitler would often state an opinion. Um, we should do we should do this or do that. He would always come out and take a more hardline position than Hitler, and Hitler liked this. Oh well, somebody thinks we should go even farther than what I thought. I was just thinking we should, you know, ban entry of any Jews. He wants to, you know, shoot all the Jews or wh whatever it was. It was just always a slightly more hardline position than Hitler was initially taken. And so this got him in great favor with Hitler. This is why, basically, in my opinion, he becomes um, a foreign minister over um, Constantine because he has this hard line of uh, opinion, um, faces it not because of significantly greater performance in the um, duties of the job. Now, we're going to keep Constantine as foreign minister while we're at peace because he reduces um, 
consumer good needs during peace, so we're going to keep him there. But, and this is another thing that was common, and I guess the most common person, or the person that did this the most, it is common that people had multiple jobs within the Third Reich. Excuse me. And so the, the biggest one, of course, was Goering. You can go to his Wikipedia page and, you know, um, Minister for Forestry and, um, you know, obviously Reich Minister for the Air Ministry and head of the Luftwaffe and head of the four-year plan and on and on and on, all of his various jobs out of Reichswerk, Hermann Goering, and, you know, so he, you know, whether he's multitasking or just power grabbing is, is a, you know, two different things. But so he gets sent off to um, administer um, the German program for Bohemia in Moravia. It is a program that was I don't know how much they were planning on um, eliminating the population there. And they're, you know, obviously they did some most assuredly war crimes, no, no doubt about that. But there was also a plan to Germanize the Czech populace, the Czech speakers. I so you know, German philosophy or German Nazi um, philosophy was malleable to the situation. So, what they may have said in 1936 and what they did in 1940 and then what they later said in 1942, it'll change because circumstances change they'll discover that some groups of people aren't so ethnically um, inferior as they were before, so we'll recruit them into the SS, or, you know, various things, you know, part of it's pushed on by the, the needs of the war, I'm sure, but, so they, they change some of the, their um, practices over time, so you have to take that into account, and then what would have happened had they won or had things continued, whether they got more hardcore in their in their systems if they had won, or whether they not feeling the pressure, been a little more loose on it, I don't know. But we only know what they did and we can speculate, and this is part of what I'm doing is speculating on that. So we're sending Constantine to Bohemia, and this will have repercussions later. Yeah, this is a Black Ice event, War of the World. This was a, um, you know, before there was an internet, there was a time before the internet, um, young ones, um, and there was a time before television, there was, the big thing was radio, and we talked about this. Well, there's even a movie or two about this. Orson Welles was a sort of a radio guy. He was always a maverick, very interesting person if you're ever looking into him. He did this broadcast of War of the Worlds, in which very at the very beginning of it, and it's in a sort of a they used to do radio plays, sort of like TV but without pictures, kids. And so they they um, and often it was you know you were an Ozzy and Harriet type situation at home, and they just you know pretend you know people would make the sounds of walking on the floor and opening doors and all this, but they had all the actors for all the roles, and they would they would do the Ozzy and Harriet, and everybody knew it was, you know, obviously not real because it was in a radio studio. Well, he did this radio broadcast. The very beginning, they told everybody it was a play. It was just, you know, fiction that they were doing at the very beginning of it, and very clearly stated it. And then they, but they did it as if a radio announcer was at an event for, I think it was about 30 or 90 minutes, somewhere in that range. It was fairly long. It wasn't like a 15 or 20 minute little thing. And so, and it was done out at, um, you know, on, Hall on Halloween. So, and it was done as if there was an Invaders from Mars, War of the Worlds. It was sort of an adaptation of H.G. Wells' novel. As if they were landing and coming in and what was to be happening. And this is, he's playing sort of the part of the reporter and all these events. Well, many, many thousands of people tuned into the event late. And it was just, you know, a, I don't know, a 30-second very clear warning. But if you showed up two minutes late into the thing, you didn't know because they didn't break the suspension of disbelief 
through the whole series. They didn't cut the commercials, I don't think. They just went on through with this thing as if it was real. So it panicked so many people. They were saying, turn on the radio and channel whatever, and calling each other up, and people were, were fleeing cities, and there were massive, massive problems because of this. This was a, a hysteria that people thought aliens from Mars had landed on Earth. And it, it's, a, it's an incredible thing. You know, it was mainly up in the northeast of the U.S. because I think that's all that where Mercury Radio Theater was broadcast to. I don't think it went to like Los Angeles or New Orleans. I think it was just up in that sort of northeast area. But it it was a weird phenomenon. So okay, uh, another one of these. I'm not going to try to pronounce. Um, during Okay, this I this double event. Yeah, maybe we found a problem here. I think this is revolver held. Work. Gain fifty manpower, lose money, lose supplies. I'm afraid to hit no need because sometimes if you do that with the code it puts in a um, a no statement so that later events will um, not fire because you decided to do no. I want to keep this going instead of go dig this up. Well, you know, I'm going to go quickly dig this up, so I may be pausing this, this thing here, but I'm going to let it play as I quickly go in and look. I guess you're still recording. Let me see if it's safe. No. Okay, well, it's not taking too long. I hope you're still able to hear this. Controls not have... Not sure why it popped up twice. But it should be safe if I read it right. Meaning there is a... There isn't a don't do, so we're just going to hit no and not have that double amount. Okay. SCOTA works. Very important um, Czechoslovakian arms manufacturer. Um, on the Hearts of Iron 4 board, um, foreign boards, I've been um, complaining about the inability to buy and sell arms. And they want you basically buy and you sell resources for um, basically fac foreign factories that, who you're selling your resources from. That will give you, in essence, a factory, um, a um, civil factory in your country, that you can do things in your country like build military factories. Well, many, many nations either didn't have any arms industry or had very selective arms industries, meaning they, um, like Denmark, they, there is Madsen, they, they did, um, Highly complicated, but rather effective light machine guns. And I think they also made a 20mm um, anti-aircraft gun. But that's about it. There was, um, to my knowledge, no aircraft production, no ship production of a military nature. I don't know whether they, you know, did other things like that. There was, you know, no tanks, no artillery, um, no heavy machine guns that I know of. They may or may not have produced, but they, 
I don't even know if they produce their own rifles. Um, I have a book on Mausers that talks about worldwide Mauser production. A lot of the Mausers were built in Belgium, you know, the licensed version of them in, um, by FN, and were sold all over the world. Um, a lot of the huge numbers to, to Latin America, a lot of the Latin American countries were equipped with Belgian-made Mausers, and earlier models from Germany and other countries as well, but a lot of Belgian-made Mausers. So there isn't in, in for a mechanism for um, Belgium to make rifles or infantry, infantry kits or something and sell them to Denmark. I think that's sort of a failing because a lot of these nations just didn't make much in the way of arms. And we're looking at like Romania with um, uh, some of the other um, units, or no, um, the other mod maker, um, Von Bowie, the Japanese guy who's doing these really great models. A lot of the tank models, and there were some Romanian tank models, but a lot of their stuff, the early stuff, was just simply imports from other countries, and sometimes they were importing um, non-assembled vehicles and just doing the assembly work locally. But so a lot of these countries weren't doing arms production. Czechoslovakia is one of the, the very big um, examples of not doing this. They had the 38T tanks as, uh, or 35 and 38T um, tanks as I know them. I forget the exact um, check designation for them. They produced some very good artillery. They were um, producing and just really sort of started producing some rather good fighters. And fighters so good that the Germans evaluated them after, right at this time after taking um, their half of Czechoslovakia to see if to continue to produce them for the Luftwaffe. They were found to be good, but not any significantly better than a um, Messerschmitt, basically. And so um, they didn't add, you know, they weren't good enough, enough better. And they didn't, um, and they would add, obviously, in a whole new um, support system because mechanically they were very different, you need different engines, different parts. So it was sort of what I understand a close thing whether to keep them in, in production or cancel the production and I, I presume convert whatever the aircraft factory was over to building German types. But Czechoslovakia obviously they didn't do naval weaponry. But their artillery, their tanks, um, they also made a copy of the German Mausers. I happen to own one of those from the interwar period. Uh, made some rather good pistols and a lot of these other things and now the, the, like the pistols, the Mausers, they kept into production they, they um, produced a, a very super lightweight Mauser for the German mountain troops I think it, I keep getting confused, I think it's the, uh, like the G3311 or 11 or G1133, I forget, it's something like that, I'd have to look it up at point. Um, but it's a super lightweight Mauser and some other stuff that they, they continue to produce during this time. So the Skoda works were very important for there, but it, it's one of the things where Czechoslovakia was doing an all-round high-quality arms production at this time. It, a lot of the models were just coming too late. The T-38T 30, the was just barely sort of entering um, use or, um, shall we say, um, you know, we just, you know, fully get into production when Czechoslovakia collapsed. And it just wasn't ready soon enough to give Czechoslovakia, I don't know, the face even for a limited time from Germany in any effective way. Okay, um, the KDF wagon. Unfortunately, this event should have fired earlier, didn't fire at the right time. I don't know if it showed up in a um, earlier video because this was right from um, where it was um, supposed to happen before the five mark plan really I think um, uh, event that we had to I had to go back and redo um, but they set up the um, 
but I, because I don't remember if you've seen it or not, so I'll go into it and try to make it brief. They really wanted a people's car. Cars um, were a, an elitist thing before. They were something that Ford and a few others were making cheaper models that were within reason of people getting, but it was still the the upper level of society to own a car. The Germans really thought and they wanted to, to be available for all the citizens of the Reich to um, to have a, an automobile. Now it was going to be, and as you can see, a fairly cheap, um, fairly simple vehicle. It was, you know, not going to be a um, Autobahn performer. You know, yeah, you can get on the Autobahn and stay in the slow lane, but that's what it was designed to do. And so that anybody who wanted one would be able to theoretically get one. Not just that um, you get it on demand or anything like that, but it was something that you could save up for. And we talked earlier about the, um, instead of buying, you know, instead of getting a loan and buying it, you know, paying, and instead of saving money, you, you put money in a um, prepayment plan kind of thing. But it was something that if you had even a mildly decent job, you could save up for and you could own it. Obviously, if you lived in a densely populated city, and I know some of the cities in Germany very much were, you might not easily have a place to park it, so you might end your daily life with a good um, uh, transportation infrastructure within the city. You may very much choose not to own a car, and I presume, you know, once these were out and popular, it would be cheap to rent for the weekends or whatever if... You know, if you're just going to use it every other weekend or something in your daily life, you didn't need it. But if you were rural or if you, whatever reason, if you wanted a car, it was with well within the grasp of the average German. Not just uh, sort of like shop owners or, the, you know, not I'm not talking elites as in, you know, the, the top of the, the, the food chain. But it was sort of, you know, the manager level of society or whatever. Could previously, like I was saying, Ford and some of the other... Um, factories, and I don't know all of the Opals and the um, Audis and the Mercedes models at this time. Uh, they did have, you know, some cheaper cars, but this was a really cheap, but supposed to be functional, functional, reliable. It wasn't cheap as in junk, it was cheap as in basic. And so, um, this will give us a um, strategic resource. It will, um, though it says it We'll no longer have it. But um, it will also um, give us four factories. And you build a major factory for this in Brunswick. And if you may be wondering how this and why for industrial capacity I merit for this event is that, um, and I have some photos, very few enough, but some photos of VW at war, they did use them in, in, at the war, but that changed the shell on it becomes the basic German Jeep. It's a rear engine, two-wheel drive Jeep, if you will. Um, the, you know, the Kubelwagen that we see all over the, you know, the German armed forces. So, it, and, you know, the, the frame, the engine, the, the drive system, it's, it's all very, very easy to change over in a, in a production sense and obviously a much, much cheaper body to make it. So it, it's a, this is setting up a massive switchover for motorization of the German army. So yes, we're going to go for this. Okay, um, Kampflieger Schulen 1 plus 2. This is GGA event, I believe. You can read the details, but qualified school received advanced pilot's license. Okay, so it's a good fighter school. Yes, we want to do that. That'll give it, gain us a bunch of officers. Oh, I know why that event. Sorry, folks. I'm just thinking back to why that last event didn't fire until now. It was because of these low numbers here. That's why it didn't fire, because um, so I think it did fire when, like I said, and had to go back to remember it fired, but um, it has, because I checked it, because I don't want to hand out um, four ICs for free 
I, I very much, this is not a gimme mod. It's a, some things are historically easier to happen. So yeah, you get them cheaper than if you built them yourself. That's, that's intended. But we're also looking at, um, they do have costs. And I think it was because the steel was so low that it didn't fire until just then. When it sh if because if I hadn't let the steel get so low as an early would, we would have had Captain of Industry earlier, much earlier before the checks, because we also get the the car factory in Czechoslovakia. But we would have had the German one earlier, and we would have been building more. Obviously, four ICs more. So this is a lesson to all of you as you play through. Don't let this get so low like I did. Um, there are a few events because before it was such a automatic to to max out on steel I probably uh, I sort of thought well let's just give them you know a lot because they have way too much steel let's just do that so probably a few events you know I put in maybe double the, the steel cost as I would have really thought was, was likely just because it didn't hurt you but because of things it did hurt us until now so keep that in mind keep that steel um, up whether by building um, uh, steel mills or through imports and then you'll get more events okay so lose some manpower gain officers yes we will do this we will get a bunch of tactic improvements Okay, Belgium. No, we're not buying any of Belgium. At least not that much. Okay, so that solves that mystery. Why it fired so late. Yes, we'll buy, buy from you. The reason I'm buying from the Soviet Union is I think you understand. Um, I'm planning on invading and taking the Belgian stocks at some point here. Yes, at some point I will take Moscow, but until then, it, it, I won't be doing it until then, and that's much later in the war. Okay, air bases for Ostreich. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. That's just warning us to, since we've already paid for them in the earlier event. to the top. So they will, and they will help the practicals on some of these factories that we're still building. No, fuel, no. Fuel, no. What is Argentina one? Not that much fuel. I give you, you know, if you just wanted to sell me a teeny bit of fuel. bunch more aircraft. Okay. Well, let's deploy the aircraft. Where should we do our heavy bombers? Six air base. Yeah. It's level six. That way we should be able to hit both east and west. Maybe not very far, but enough that Strategic bombing house. It's a real person. That's not a real person. Well, you know. Let's go to bomber command. Oops, sorry. A bit much. Bomber command.
Weber. Walter Weber. He survived this playthrough. So we have Weber. And let's see, do we have a good tactical bomb? I mean, Weber's both. But he was the long range bomber enthusiast, so we'll give it to him. There'll be another. Flieger Corps B. So he's under that. He should be. He's a guard will build you. That needs to be under Flieger Corps F. And that's 27. 27. I'm going with mostly Virtually, but mostly with a um, six fighter stack. I think last playthrough, um, the first three would come and get in the fight and would get chewed up before the second two or three um, groups of three would get into the fight and maybe then win it. So I think we need to look at uh, larger stacks for optimum performance. But I don't think, and I may be wrong, oh my god, he's probably the best um, person do, doing the math and doing the testing for min-maxing kind of thing. He might disagree and want to go to eight or more, but I think he's doing about six as well, and that's partly where I'm getting why. So, if you're not watching his series um, and you want to find out about some of the um, game playing tricks he's definitely one to, to look at this series is good most assuredly I would recommend it for the moment He doesn't um, play historically or um, do historical commentary. Um, oh my god. Um, but he does do the. So now we are. Well, our blue punch are stolen, the tail hook. And we are now, because of increased air units on the field, um, regional air power loses some efficiency in production but gains air organization. That's good. These guys are all wanting to sell me fuel, I presume. Money for fuel, no. Who wants to sell me? Preferably somebody who may be friendly. Sell me some energy. No. They need money. Do you want to sell me one energy? No. No. Let's see if we can get Japan to be a bit more friendly here. What does Bulgaria want? No fuel. 
Okay, aircraft prototype evaluations have advanced. Um, oh, it's this technology. It allows us to improve some of these here. Given time and research. Well, we'll do some of that as well. And a bunch of unit upgrades. Create the 4th Panzer Division. Yes, we want to do that. We will do it in the production queue. I think that'll be the best. I say I think because I'm not absolutely sure. And just on map, you don't get any um, experiences, so this is like giving training. I don't know how much you guys realize that Black Ice is sort of Hearts of Iron 3.5, because I just did their their DD. I know I'm. They probably did that last week. By the time you're seeing this, last week's DD um, developmental diary on the weather, and they've now added mud and snow effects not just weather I mean it is it's coming under the weather but there are mud and snow effects in certain regions that you know so you won't get um, snow and you know the snow effects build up or whatever in other parts you know but it's supposedly really good and it's very much like um, the best parts of the mud and snow effects meaning they're not using fortification modifier so it's it's really working but Black Ice has already been doing this for some time, and so whether they're just thinking along the same lines, or they are, um, yeah, nice picture, I used that for an event, I, I don't know if it's for the Lich Division, or not, when I made the, made a um, similar image for Vowart's Panzer Mods. Whether, like I say, whether they're making, um, thinking along the same lines or the Arts of Iron development team has been taking peeks at Black Ice, I don't know which, but, um, and Black Ice stuff, yes, has its problems in the sense that they use the fort modification for it, which isn't ideal, but I mean, they're doing what they can with what's available. And that's a very good thing. Okay. Another one of these things is going to take way too much energy. Yeah, see here... I was overly free with energy and mm, a bit overly free with metal. I was careful on the supplies and um, the rare material. But producing all these anti-aircraft guns are going to take a lot of metal. Um, this is part of the um, West Wall chain of events and organization tote. It's in looking down on a standard um, anti-aircraft gun, fixed anti-aircraft gun position in the west at this time built for this program um you can see the photo of it you can see like these sort of dugouts here for ammunition storage and other things that are that are um designated there so they built them to a plan and they were just basically you know in fields or wherever and so this is built to the plan um part of the west wall we get the effects and we already chose to do this long ago so yeah so hit yes fortunately it just done that to me um, which I don't like now that we're doing this I don't think it's such a big deal that 
you shouldn't play the mod, but notice, but you get all these, basically if you pop them up there, finish production. And if you look at the cost of the, um, they've raised the cost in, or either that cost and or um, production time in Black Ice 8 for any aircraft guns, you will be very willing to pay for all those anti-aircraft guns in the West. They will help. And one of the, re like them, the reason I put it in here is because they'll help reduce the practicals and other artillery. Okay. Transport ship engine. Okay. I'm not going to click on it, but it crashed me out before. If you ever see this, warning to everybody, and I, this isn't a black ice thing. This is a hearts of iron en engine situation. But if you ever see all these red zeros, or all this red up here, and if you notice, effective IC, available IC is zero here. Um, this is something to do with the engine. And I've seen this on um, non-black ice mods as well. So I'm very much saying it is not black ice or something that black ice is doing. It is just a engine situation. Do not, but if you see this, do not click on the production um, tab. You will crash out. Wait for a day or two for it to go bye-bye. Okay, see, um, you just saw the, the flash of all of these any aircraft guns. They're just, they're, you know, and I'm not, we've lost the effects of land power for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. Um, you know, I didn't go in and throw level 5 or 10 any aircraft guns. A few of the places got two, um, a lot of them just got one. based it on some um, other work. You know, a few like Dusseldorf did get three, but um, there's Hitler at Bonn, looking at a big hotel. That's one of the, the ones that TRE adds. I think I have nine um, places. But so we have the, the Western Luft Zone, and it's basically all the provinces. So um, now as you see, we're back to green here, so we're fine. I'm still going to save it, just be on the safe side. Before dealing with anything. But, so, just if you ever come across the second set of numbers, set two set, as red, do not click on your production to see what's going on. It will crash you out. Um, that's what happened to me. Some of the um, crash situations have nothing to do with black ice or the save game problem. Okay, so transport ship engine has advanced. We want to look at that. shift over to, because this is sort of what I'm worried about is landing craft ranges here, so we're going to do that. We'll increase it, increase it by 100 kilometers over where it is currently. And now we're going to go here to I don't know what the engine is looking at, looking for. Um, but it turns it to red. Okay, and we will also... Thank you. 
experienced these um, level zeros. There's a lot of famous guys in here. It just, it sort of, you get them early and it's harder to show them without great experience. So they'll get, the ideas get better over time. Well, I think we're going to end the episode here. Thanks so much for viewing. Um, please, again, post um, any comments. I really appreciate it. It helps. Um, helps um, within just YouTube mechanics to improve things, but also it just gets um, people interested in it. And um, I'd be happy if you have a Facebook page, you share some of these videos, or you talk about it in other forums. You could always use a prom promotion for the channel. Thanks so much, and thanks for liking the videos. Have a good day.